Welcome back to the band guide where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and if you have guitars in your song and you want them to sound as good as possible, then you probably need to use a little bit of EQ to help them fit in the context of the mix and shine through as best as possible. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a very common approach to EQing rhythm guitars, but lead guitars as well, electric guitars of any sort, to help them fit in the context of the mix and really cut through and shine through in a way that sounds great. Now, it's important to remember that with anything we're EQing, guitars, vocals, anything, what I'm demonstrating in this video and what you have in your mix will likely sound pretty different. So the exact EQ that they're gonna need is gonna be a little bit different. Follow the tips and the cues and the general process for your mix, but when it comes to finding specific frequencies, you're gonna to wanna to find the ones that work right for your mix. Now, if you don't know exactly how to use EQ, I can't go into that in depth in this video, but I've put together an entire EQ cheat sheet that will walk you through everything you really need to know fundamentally about an EQ so you can understand the parts of it and how to use it a little bit better. It's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to grab that. And let's go ahead and dive into EQ and some electric guitar. No matter what we're EQing, we always have three goals. Minimize the bad, highlight the good, and make space for every source. We want to think of EQ as a tool to help us shape the sound to sound the way we want it to, but then to also make everything fit together in the puzzle that is mixing. So let's start by just listening to these guitars as they currently sound in the mix. They sound great, right? We're focusing on these rhythm guitars here, so let's listen to those in solo. Sound really, really good. Now, these rhythm guitars, we have uh, the first guitar up here, amp one, was an orange guitar amp that we tracked in the studio. Uh, just a basic orange amp going into a cabinet with an SM57 on it. That one on its own sounds like this. And then with the second guitar, what I've done is I've taken a DI of a separate guitar recording. So this isn't the same guitar recording, but a separate guitar recording. And I've run it through the GarageBand Amp Designer to emulate that same guitar sound. Listen to how similar it sounds. Kind of wild, right? So uh, again, GarageBand Amp Designer is insane. The fact that you can have tones this good for free inside GarageBand free software is amazing. Uh, okay, so that is the where we're starting from here. Now, if you watch my last video, I'll link to that up here. I talk about having a little bit of variation between your guitar tones. So we want them to be complementary, but we want them to be a little bit different. This is going to help have more separation in your mix to start. Have these two guitar parts just cut through a little bit differently to start. And right now they're sounding very, very, very similar. So what we wanna do is just make a slight shift in some variable with this. In this case, I'm gonna change out the cabinet and just find one that still complements the sound, but sounds a little bit different. This will help our EQing because these tones will automatically sound a little bit different. A different cabinet is gonna have a different EQ shape, a different EQ response, if you will. And so by changing out the cabinet, I'm already making more separation between these two guitar tracks. And then I'll even heighten that a little bit further with EQ in just a minute. So let's start by just finding a cabinet that we like. I think I already know which one I wanna go with. So I think I like this one the best. They sound really good together, but they sound a little bit different. This one's like a little bit thinner, a little bit uh, brighter. Okay, so we're starting there. We already now have a little bit more separation between these two guitars just by changing out the cabinet. So EQ moves don't always have to come with EQ. We've already made a little bit more separation here. All right, and then we're gonna jump into EQ. So again, with EQ, 
We always want to minimize the bad, highlight the good, and make space for every source. We're going to start by making space for every source with this source. We're, that just means cutting out things that this source doesn't necessarily need so that other sources that need that those frequencies can have them. So, for example, the kick drum and uh, the bass guitar need low-end frequencies, so we're going to cut out some low-end frequencies that might just kind of be rumbling below this guitar. This guitar doesn't have low-end frequencies in the parts it's playing, We'll get any sort of rumble out of here. And then the second is actually in high-end frequencies on this particular source. So with this source, with high-end frequencies, there's some brittleness, some brightness. It's almost fuzzy that isn't necessarily adding to this source, but it might get in the way of cymbals, vocals, different things that actually need some of those frequencies to cut through in the mix. So we're going to uh, cut some of those out. That's a little bit about minimizing the bad, if you will, just a frequency that uh, I don't like to my personal ears on this source and also making space for the other sources. So let's listen uh, just to this one in solo, and I will go ahead and put it up the center here. So when it comes to cutting out those high-end frequencies, listen to what those high-end frequencies are doing. It's kind of exaggerated, but there's nothing about that that adds to this source to me. Guitars, electric guitars in particular, are very mid-range heavy instruments. So we're gonna focus on making the mid-range shine here. So we're gonna just put on this uh, low pass filter here and we're just gonna bring it down until it's not necessarily getting in the way of other things and it's sounding good to us. Kind of wild, yeah. It, you don't really notice it as you're doing it, but then once you take it away, it's like, whoa, where did all that come from? So I'm not really cutting into the tone of the guitar, but I'm cutting out some of that just fizzle up at the top. Again, on its own, it's not necessarily adding to it, but it's helping it cut, sit in a place where everything else can shine around it. Uh, and it's not hurting this tone. The mid-range is really what we're focusing on here. This is kind of, this is what's gonna be called a C shape. So as we cut out the lows, you'll see what I mean here. Uh, okay, so we're gonna cut out the lows now, just anything we don't need down here. So you'll see, it, we're getting a little bit of information down here around like 75 hertz. We don't want this to get in the way of the source itself. We just want to cut out any sort of rumble that might build up uh, to get in the way of other things. So listen to this without the CQ on with it. A little more mid-rangey. It's gonna tuck into the mix a lot better. And that allows us to bring the volume up a little bit more. Okay, so this is the C-shaped curve. If you turn it up, it would be a C. Uh, and this is our starting point for this EQ. Now, the fizzle was kind of the only thing that I was hearing that I didn't like, the bad that I wanted to minimize. So I've already minimized that with this EQ. Now we want to highlight the good, right? We want to bring out a frequency that sounds good to us in the context of the mix. You don't always have to do this if it now sounds perfect to you. I think there's a little bit more in the presence range, this kind of brighter area here that we could boost to find. We wanna do this in the context of the mix. We want this part that we're highlighting to sound good in the context of the mix. So we're going to unsolo it and I'm gonna use this gain here to bring up the overall volume without throwing off our static mix. So those just cut through the mix well, right at that spot. Sounds good on this guitar. Helps it be a little bit brighter, but it's still mid-rangey. Uh, yeah, awesome, I like it. And then the second thing we wanna do is start thinking about our guitars together. So as I played earlier, we have two guitar rhythm guitars playing the exact same part. So if we're listening to those together, 
What we want to do is create just a little bit more separation between these two. And we're gonna do that with what's called complementary EQ. So I've already set up an EQ on this other guitar track and I've boosted on this guitar track around about 1700 Hertz. So this is that first guitar amp. That frequency was sounding good to me, cutting through to me. Uh, and then on our second guitar amp here, we've now boosted around 27, 2800 Hertz. And what we want to do is we want to cut the opposite frequency in the opposite channel. So we're going to go back to this first guitar amp here. And on here, I'm going to cut where I just boosted on our second guitar. So I'm going to bring an EQ curve up here and I'm going to go up to about 2700 Hertz right around the same frequency range, and we're just gonna bring that down just a little bit. I'm gonna make it a bit of a tighter cue. In general, think tighter cuts, wider boosts. Uh, that's a good starting point. If you notice, you immediately hear those frequencies a little bit better when this cut is on. It, even though these are panned wide, you can just perceive them a little bit better when there's less of this frequency in this ear. Okay, and then going back down to this EQ, we wanna do the same thing. So on our first guitar, we had about 1700 Hertz. So we're gonna find that frequency and we're just gonna cut that uh, by again, two to three decibels. And we're gonna make it a little bit tighter here. So we're looking at the decibels down here. We want our decibels, our boosting cuts to be in the two to six decibel range. We don't need to go above six decibels uh, almost ever. Typically, I'm usually in a two to four range on most EQ cuts and boosts if you want it to sound natural. So now what we've done is we've functionally made, if I did a, a two decibel to three decibel boost on this source and a two decibel to three decibel cut on the other source, I functionally made six decibels of, of range between these two sources at the frequencies that sound good for each of them. And that just allows them to both have their own space in the mix a little bit better, even though they're doing the exact same thing. So listen to them now. So subtle changes, right? We're not changing the way this sounds. We got the tones to sound the way we wanted them to in the recording phase when we were setting up our guitar amp. We got the tones to sound the way we wanted them to. And now we're EQing it to fit better in the mix. adds up, right? We didn't do anything crazy in this video and I would be lying to you if I told you you needed to. Professional sounding mixes aren't a combination of crazy secret tricks and crazy moves that you don't know about. It's subtle things that add up together to create a clean professional mix. And EQ is the first tool you need to learn to do that well. EQ is the tool that helps you shape everything to fit in the, into the puzzle that is your mix. If you want everything to fit together and sound as good as possible, you gotta be using EQ. And if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my EQ cheat sheet. It's completely free and it's really gonna help you out to better understand EQ and better use EQ in your mix. Before we go, I always like to finish with a question for you. This week I wanna hear, have you been EQing your guitars? What approach do you take? What is your favorite thing to do when you're EQing your guitars? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time, I can't